Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Farming Simulator 19. We are back here in Goldcrest Valley and it's back to work. We get our harvester going. We have a lot of stuff to do today. I'm getting ready to dump this grass over here in the silage bunker. If you remember in the last episode, I was on my way up to dump this off when the episode ended. So we're picking up right where we left off. I went ahead and came up the hill because the hill was really steep and it, with these little tiny low horsepower trackers, they don't do too well with a really steep hill. So we're gonna go ahead and dump this in here. And there should only be one more load after this, I believe, of grass. So once we get that load in here, I will show you how to compact down your silage so that you can oh, I got stuck on the wall there that's gonna make a big lump but that way you can turn it into silage it has to be at 100 percent compaction before it will begin to ferment so you get it to 100 percent and then you cover it up and it starts to ferment we're also going to keep planting we're planting soybeans right now there so we have a lot going on and we have a, a lot of potential money coming in the future. It's just a matter of making it. You know, you got to harvest the fields and you got to sell the crops. That's what it's all about. Right now we have sheep going and we have chickens going. And maybe by the end of this episode, I might have pigs going. That's my plan, because I'm going to make this farm into the farm that has all the animals. And we're going to get to the point later on where everything we grow will be just to feed the animals. But first got to make some major money to get all that going. Alright, we're back down here where we're picking up this grass at. On this field, on field 9. And like I said, this should be the very last one, because all we have is these two partials down here on the other end of the field. So it shouldn't even really be a full load in this loading trailer. But right now we're kind of in the dark days, which is the very beginning days of the game. And during this beginning time period, it's a little, it's a little more difficult because you don't have tons of cash. And this game really gets broken down into several stages. The first stage, which is kind of where we are now, is the dark days where you are working your tail off, making a little bit off each harvest, just trying to get to the point to where you have enough money to buy the next very expensive piece of equipment that you need to upgrade to be able to do better and do more. Once you get out of the dark days, you kind of get into the, the cruising area. Now this is where everything's just starting to work on autopilot. You got everything going. Uh, you don't have great equipment yet, but you've upgraded some of your equipment, or at least you have all of the equipment that you need, even if it's small, to do the jobs. So it's kind of just cruising on its own to where you just keep working fields, you keep selling crops, you keep doing what you're doing. And once you leave that, you get to like the the true mid game or like the the mid to late game. That's where you're starting to get money and you have upgraded your machinery all the way up to big machinery now. And you're starting to do pretty good. You're still not, you know, crazy rich, but you're not hurting either. You don't have to worry about if you're going to be able to afford something if you need it. You've probably got animals going at this point, whatever animals you choose, and they are doing really well. You've got them fed constantly. You've got a surplus of food built up into the silo. The future is bright. You are upper middle class. You are doing well. And then you get to the late game. Uh, during the late game stage, you are filthy rich. I mean, you've got millions of dollars. You've got more money than you'll ever spend on the game. And really, there's no point or reason to selling the crops anymore. 
because you don't need the cash. So you get to the point where you start saving all your crops in a silo just to feed your pigs and stuff like that. And that's fun for a while. Uh, and then you get to the point to where you're like, okay, there's really no challenge left. This is this game is kind of over almost. So you start doing really crazy stuff. You start jumping your tractors off of mountains and all kinds of nutso things just to bring some enjoyment into the game again. And you start to miss the dark days again. Even though the dark days were a real struggle because you were, you were constantly trying to figure out how you were going to come up with the money to buy the next thing you wanted. And you're always impatient. You're always like, God, when am I going to get there? But you don't remember the struggle. You just remember that you had goals back then and it was fun to try to reach them. So you start yearning for those dark days again. So then you end up starting another game. You get rid of the game you're working on because you've, you've already done everything there is to do. There's no real reason to keep playing on that map. And you start a brand new game, either on a different map, so you can check out a different map, brand new set of challenges, or if you really like a map a lot, maybe you'll do the same map again. And then you realize, oh man, I'm back in the dark days. And now it's the grind. I've got to struggle to get this going. But you learn to appreciate and love that. So that's kind of the way the game goes. It kind of rotates. It kind of goes in a circle. And then you'll build up that game and get it to a certain point. And then you're like, okay, time to go back to the dark days again and have a little struggle. So that's basically the chronology of the game. But you'll reach a certain point, and I'm at this point, where you've done everything there is to do just about. So you really start getting crazy. Now I'm going to show you how you compact this real quick. You're going to drive forwards, stop at the end, back up, stop at the end, forwards, repeat. This is going to slowly raise your percentage up. You can see on the top left of the screen it says compacting 20% right now. Now it's 21 and it'll be 22 in just a second, 22. This is all you do until it gets to 100%. And then you can get off your tractor, push in on the left stick, and that'll cover it. And then it'll begin to ferment, and you just have to wait for the fermentation to reach 100%. Then you can uncover it, you have silage. But you'll get to the point where I am where you've kind of done everything. So you're kind of waiting for a, a new map to come out that you can check out and explore. And you start trying to figure out out-of-the-box weird things to do that presents you with a challenge again. And that's kind of where I am. That's why on the other series I'm doing on Farming Simulator for the channel, I'm doing it on No Man's Land, which is a rather new map. It's not super new. I've had it for a while. But it didn't come with the base game. It's something that came much later. And on that map, you have something that you don't usually have on maps. You have the ability to kind of do whatever you want because there's not a lot of unmovable landmarks in the way. You don't have a bunch of giant lakes. You don't have a river going through that you have to deal with. You don't have uh, giant mountains or anything like that. So you have the opportunity to kind of do your own farm and make your own fields because there's only the one tiny field. So you just kind of let your imagination run wild. And one thing I'm doing on that series is I'm going to take that entire map, and it's a gigantic map, and plow the entire thing up and make it into one field. And then I'm going to plant that whole field, and I'm going to harvest that whole field and see how much we make. I'll harvest probably soybeans because that's the, the highest paying crop. But right before I plant I will look and see what's selling for the most but I'm pretty sure it'll be soybean and we will do that and we will harvest it and we'll see what we get see how many millions of dollars we make off of doing the entire map as one field and then maybe we keep going maybe that series is over at that point it'll take a while it'll take a lot of episodes to get there because that is a gigantic map and you got to plow the entire thing and it's it's a nightmare to do but it's kind of calming to sit there and plow and and I've watched videos of other people plowing and it's calming to watch for me at least I enjoy it so if that's something that you'd be interested in watching check out the other series as well because it's going to be kind of fun I've done one video so far on it 
and I'm going to be doing a lot more. I'm also going to keep doing this farm and let this one build up and, and get to that point before I cancel it out too, because I'm going to put all the animals here. I'm going to have... I already have sheep and I already have chickens. I'm going to put pigs in. Probably by the end of this episode, I'll have pigs going. Um, and then I'm going to be working towards getting cows as well. And I may even do horses on this map just to show you horses. I'm not a huge fan of them, but I'll do it. i got to go down here and empty this guy out. His thing is full, but then I'll come back and finish compacting. But I'm not a huge fan of, of the horses. They're kind of a pain to do. But I will do them on this map as well so that you can see them. So we'll have every type of animal you can possibly have in the game going on this farm. So that you can see it all. And this will be the animal farm. And the other one will be for plowing up the whole field. And trying to really make something amazing out of it that you don't see every day. And in the future I'll do different maps as they come out and... And you'll get to see different cool mods and all that kind of stuff as I find ones I like and get. But that's the basic premise of what I'm doing on the other map. But when you get to the point where I am on this game, to where you have played it for so many years, and you know it in and out, you kind of try to find little challenges like that to, to keep you interested and keep you having fun. I watched... Uh, a couple guys, they go by the name The Squad on YouTube. They do farming videos and stuff as well. And I watched one of their videos one time, and they were on some map. I don't remember what map it was. But there was a river that ran through the map, and it was a logging map, I think, because there was a ton of trees. And what they were doing was cutting down the trees and turning them into wood chips and then trying to build their own bridge out of wood chips to cross the river. And, I don't know, they did four, maybe five episodes on it where, where they spent a great deal of time cutting down all these trees and turning them into wood chips and trying to build this wood chip bridge to get across the river. And it was incredibly fun and incredibly interesting to watch. Uh, they didn't have a whole lot of success. They managed to get something that was semi-crossable. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't great. But it did the job. You could get across the river if you had the right vehicle. But it was just fun to watch that struggle and to watch that out-of-the-box thinking of different fun things you can do with the game that they never intended you to do with the game. And that's one of the things that happens in the late game where you are at the point where you've kind of mastered the game already and you're looking for new challenges and fun things to do. And I actually tried to do that myself after watching that video to see if I could do it. And it is incredibly difficult to do. And it was, I got bored of cutting trees long before I ever got to the point where I made a good bridge. So I, what I did was I took the, the buy anything mod where you can buy wood chips. And I just filled up tractor trailer load after tractor trailer load of wood chips and kept driving them down and dumping them. But... Interesting, fun things like that I'll be messing with and, and trying to, to figure out how to do in some of the series I do for this game. Because this game is, is brilliant. I absolutely love it. It might be my favorite game of all time. At least the, the series, the Farming Simulator series. This game is extremely good. Farming Simulator 19. Farming Simulator 17 was also extremely good. The nice thing about this from... 17 is you have placeable animal pens in this one. So you can actually place the animals wherever you want them. So like I did here, I bought a big field that's relatively flat, and I'm using that as my home base to where I can set up my farm. Uh, in 17, you didn't have that ability to place animal pens wherever you wanted. They were static on the map. They were already placed for you in a certain spot, and you would just go there and buy them. Now, one nice thing about that setup was they didn't have a limit on the amount of animals you could have. So here, you can only put so many in a pen. And if you want more than that, you have to buy multiple pens. And on a lot of maps, that's just not possible. You're not going to have enough space that's flat to place your animal pens down to where they're not going to be all crazy looking and sticking way up in the air where you can't get on them. 
So it kind of limits you as far as the amount of animals you can have. On 17, sky was the limit, dude. I would do cows, because I love doing cows, and I would have just thousands and thousands of cows. I would have every field on the map bought and planted with grass. And the whole time, all I'm doing is mowing grass to feed the cows. Mowing grass, making silage, making hay, turning it into total mixed rations to keep the cows fed. And I was making millions of dollars off of the milk. It was insane the amount of money I was making playing that game. It was really, really cool. I really like having a static animal pen where you can buy as many as you want. And it doesn't matter. You can have thousands and thousands and it's okay. I really enjoyed that portion of that game. The nice thing about being able to set the animal pens wherever you want is it gives you a lot more freedom to build your farm wherever you want it and however you want it. Where on 17 you kind of had to just build your farm wherever they told you to build it because that's where everything was. And you didn't really have the option to to move your stuff wherever you wanted it. Now, some stuff you could. You could put sheds different places. You could put silos different places. You could do stuff like that. But as far as your animals, you were just, they were where they were. You know, the, the pigs had their own area where that's where the pigs were. Cows were where the cows were, etc. Sheep, everything. So you were kind of limited by that. But if they combined the two, made placeable cow pens, but you could put an unlimited amount of cows in them, that would be the best of both worlds. Because then you would only have to find space to place one for each animal you wanted. And you could have as many animals as you wanted to put in there. Because it got to the point on 17 where I was literally, I had so many cows, I mean just thousands and thousands of cows, that all I did was was mow, and I couldn't I couldn't keep up to keep them fed. It was hard to try to to get enough grass to keep them fed, even though I had every field on the map growing grass, and I had a whole fleet of forage harvesters working around the clock, mowing that grass and bringing the grass back so I could feed them grass, feed them silage, feed them hay. It was crazy, and it was a lot of fun. Because I like that challenge of trying to, to keep up with it. Now, as you see me going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on this, trying to get the compaction to 100%, this takes a long time when you have a tiny tractor. If you are doing this with like a wheel loader, it doesn't take very long at all because it moves much quicker. You still got to go back and forth a bunch of times, but it's nowhere near as many times as I've had to. The reason why it's taking so long for me is because I have this tiny little tractor. It has almost no weight. It's a little puny thing. If you have a much bigger tractor going over it, it compacts much faster. But you also sell weights that you can hook to the back of your tractor that will make it compact faster. So I just don't feel like spending the money on it when this works. All I have to do is keep driving back and forth. And as you can see now, we're at, what, 92%, 93% now? So we're almost done with this. So once we get this to 100%, I'll show you how you cover it. And then literally it's just a matter of waiting until it's fermented. It usually takes about a day for it to ferment all the way to 100%. And then once that's done, you just use it. You can come in with a, with a wheel loader or with like a front loader or something like that with a bucket. And you can pick this stuff up. Or what I'm going to do is show you a little trick that most people don't know you can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that loading wagon right there. Now we're at 100%. So what you're going to do is you're going to walk up to the grass and you're going to press in on the L stick. See how where it says blanket silo L stick? Now that's what happens and now it's fermenting. But I'm going to take that loading wagon once it's done and I'm going to show you how you can pick up all that silage with the loading wagon which is super cool and it makes it super easy to do because in the old days what you used to have to do is 
pick it all up with a bucket. So you were literally in there with your wheel loader getting bucket full at a time of silage and dumping it into a trailer so that you could either sell it at the biogas plant or feed it to your cows or whatever. And it took forever to empty a silo. Or you could buy the mixing wagon that you use for the cows and you could actually suck it up like a vacuum cleaner with that. But even that took a bit of time to do because you can only hold like 15 or 17,000 liters at a time. But I'm going to show you how you can use your loading wagon and pick it up much faster. The same way we dumped it in, we're going to be able to drive back through and pick it back up, which is awesome. You just have to be super slow when you do it, because if you're not, you're going to have trouble and it's going to miss stuff. All right, we are back down here with our harvester because he is almost full. So since we got the compaction done and the silo is fermenting to make the silage, I figured we'd come back down here and go ahead and get this guy emptied out. We'll either follow along beside him and empty him that way or wait till he till he's done. I might be able to catch him before he gets to the end of the row and go ahead and empty him out. One nice thing you can do with this is if you get him emptying into your trailer before he reaches the end of the row, he will stop at the end of the row and finish emptying just like this to where he will not continue on until well I didn't get there quite fast enough if you get him to actually start emptying before he gets to the end of the row like that then he'll stop and empty the entire contents of the harvester and then continue on but if you get there like I did after he's already done harvesting that but before he moves on he'll go ahead and start the next the next row and you just kind of got to follow along with him which is fine. It's it's a little bit more difficult sometimes, depending on what tractor you're using, to match the speed. Because sometimes you'll be going too fast and you got to keep letting off the, the accelerator and then hitting it again to try to stay in the sweet spot. But it's not that bad. So we'll go ahead and get him completely emptied out. And maybe we'll even have this trailer completely filled up so that we can go ahead and sell it and make a little bit of cash. Now there are a lot of different money cheap things you can do in this game. One of them is the government subsidy mod. I have that mod. You can literally place a sign on your property that says government subsidy and it will give you every hour it will give you money depending on the level you're at if you if you have it on easy it gives you I think 150,000 an hour I believe is what it is uh, on normal it gives you a hundred thousand dollars an hour and I'm not sure what it gives you on hard if it's still a hundred thousand or if it's less but any, either way you get money for free every hour every time the hour turns over on your game clock you get that amount of money so very quickly as you go through the day you can make a tremendous amount of money from that mod I also have on the map right now the buy anything and the sell anything mod one really cool money cheat you can use if you really need to make some money fast to buy something but you don't really want to set up the the mod and wait you can just buy something from the buy anything mod and then turn around and sell it in the sell anything mod. The price that you get for selling it is always going to be higher than the price you're getting for buying it from those mods. So that's a way you can make a tremendous amount of money. Just roll through, fill up a trailer with soybeans, let's say, and then sell it and profit. And then buy them again and then sell them again and when the price drops to the point to where you're not making as much money anymore you can switch to a different crop and you can very quickly build up a tremendous amount of money doing it that way as well I'm probably not gonna be doing much of that on on this gameplay simply because I, I kinda wanna go through the whole process of of building the farm and show you how all that works without the easy money cheat things now if you're playing for fun 
and you want to set up the government subsidy so that you can just get money quick and within a day or two you can have all the money you need to buy all the different stuff you want to buy so you can play the game that's completely up to you I would never look down on you for doing it there are people that would a lot of people think that's cheating and they say that not to do it but the way I look at it dude it's a game play it how you want you know if you're having fun and it's entertaining to you and it's making you forget about your problems or making you forget about the crazy crap that's going on in our world today and you're just happy there ain't nothing wrong with that man I don't care if you cheat or not have fun because this world is all jacked up right now and something that brings you pleasure and takes your mind off of it is a good thing so if you want to put that mod on and make a hundred million dollars and buy every piece of equipment on the game and have a crash up derby in the middle of your field whatever have fun dude I do all kinds of cool stuff on this game. I build ramps and stuff sometimes. I will take the landscaping mod and you can actually move the ground up and down and, and landscape everything. And I'll build like ramps and stuff and build like little obstacle courses on fields where I drive the tractors and can jump them and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Why not? Have a good time. You know, do anything you want to do. It doesn't matter. Now right now I'm looking at a little bitty steer loader this is a mod that I downloaded which is kind of cool because it's only like five thousand dollars but I want to make sure that it has the ability to use the attachment that I want to use before I buy it because if not I got to buy the other one so I just got to make sure that it's gonna have what I need it to have see I can definitely have a bucket I will need that to help out with the the spillage for the animals because they always make a mess but also I want this certain attachment I forget what it's called a bag handler bag holder or something like that that will enable me to pick up the skids without having to use forks because the forks on this game there it is big bag handler that's what I want so I can definitely have that with that mod so I'm down for that let's buy that and we'll go back and we'll buy that really cheap skid steer loader and we'll be in business now I could buy one of the other ones that are like thirty thousand dollars but I don't have thirty thousand dollars but I can't afford this one that's only like five thousand dollars so let me get everything situated I gotta figure out which bucket would be the best bucket for me to use I want something that that's gonna be able to do all the different things I wanted to do as far as crop wise capacity isn't as important to me right now because all I'm doing is using it to pick up the crap that the animals spill so I will buy this one for for fifty nine hundred dollars and I have the bucket and I have the other attachment there beside it now the problem is I have to make two trips up to the farm because I can only attach one of these at a time and this thing drives slow but I'm gonna try something a little crazy here because I don't accept that I have to make two trips so I'm gonna hook the bucket up I'm gonna tilt it all the way so it's as up as it can go as, as far as tilted back and I'm gonna pick this thing up and I'm gonna put it in the bucket like that then I'm going to lift the bucket a little bit just like that and I'm gonna to try to drive back up to the farm with this now if my driving skills are up to par and I'm extremely lucky I'll be able to get this all the way back up to the farm without it falling out of my bucket thus saving myself an extra trip if I can't then I'm gonna to have to stop multiple times pick it up and put it back into the bucket either way is fine because I'm still saving time I don't have to make two trips but just as a little personal challenge for myself I really want to get all the way up to the farm without dropping this because it shouldn't work there's no reason that that should stay in that bucket properly it's too big to go in the bucket it's awkward as hell the way it's sitting it would tip right out in real life there's no way that would stay like that but it is somehow so I want to try to get it all the way up to the farm 
without it falling out. That's my, my challenge here that I've set for myself. So we're going to see what happens. I have to be careful of trees. I also need to watch out for little sloped areas that the ground raises up on me too fast because that'll bump me and I might spill it. I also have to watch hitting the brakes too fast because that could be an issue. I also need to turn my lights on so I can actually see where the hell I'm going. I'm bad about that in every game I play. I don't know why, but whenever it gets dark out, in my mind I'm thinking, dude, it's dark out here. But I never think, dude, you have headlights, turn them on. For some reason it doesn't dawn on me to turn my headlights on until I've already been driving in the dark for a little while. Now once you reach this point of night and it's starting to get dark like this, most people skip through the night, and I usually do as well. Because driving in the dark like this sucks, you can't see where you're going. You can see a little bit ahead of you with your lights, but not much. The reason why I'm kind of still going with it is because on this map, you can still see a little bit. So it's not like complete pitch black. You will see on No Man's Land, on that series I'm doing, nighttime there, completely pitch black. You can see the distance of your lights, and that is all. You can't see anything in the distance. You can't see the sky, you can't see buildings, you can't see anything. It's just black. So when you get to nighttime there, if you're out in the middle of a field like I am now, there's no way to tell which way you're supposed to be going. Like now I can see the direction I need to move. Because I can still see that farmhouse and the fence, and I can see the hill up there that I have to go up the little trail. But on no man's land, you wouldn't be able to see any of that. You could literally only see what your lights are lighting up at the moment. Everything else around it, completely black. So believe it or not, you can actually get lost in the middle of a field when it becomes nighttime and have no idea which direction you're supposed to be moving. Because you can't see anything on your mini-map, you can't see anything on the, the regular screen, you're just blind. So it's important if you're on a map like that, where the nighttime is actually really, really dark, it's important to kind of watch the time. And when it starts to become evening and get to the point where it's going to be dark, you probably ought to think about sleeping through the night at that point because you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble. Now, I do have mods that I downloaded that are giant street lights that I can place wherever I want, and they'll light up an area. And I probably, once I get everything set up at my farm to where all the pens are where I want them and everything, I will probably buy some of those and set them up around the farm so that at nighttime my farm is lit up really bright so that I can still work at night if I want to on my farm. But the problem is, if you set them out and about on fields you're working and stuff, you, you got to own the field, right? You got to own the land to place the mod on it. And the problem is on this map, on Goldcrest Valley, when you buy a field, you're buying the field. The plot of land around the field that surrounds it is a separate purchase. Now, it's not like that on a lot of maps, but on this one it is. So that means if I want to set up street lights while I'm working on a field, not only do I have to buy the field, but I have to buy the land around the field, which in some cases might cost as much as the damn field. So it, it runs into a lot more money. And then you have to buy the, the lamp post to put there, and then when you get done, you can sell everything back, but you lose a little bit of money on the lamp post, but that's not much of an issue. So it's doable, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. Now, I made it all the way up here without dropping that out, which is awesome. I didn't have to stop once. So I'm very pleased with that. So we're going to sit this probably right over here underneath these windows. I think would be a good spot. And we're going to get it set down there and arranged so that I can just drive up and pick it up. Okay, we don't want to sit it this way because then I can't pick it up so we got to turn it kind of the other way around all right I'm gonna probably have to sit it down and re-grab it 
so that it's right. Yeah, that'll do. I'll just leave it there for now. I don't care. Because I'm going to be driving into it, picking it up, and picking that pallet up in a minute anyway. So then when I put it down from the skid steer loader, I'll put it where I want it. But first, we're going to go over here to the chickens, and we are going to clean up this wheat that has spilled out. Now, this is feed that has come out of the trough. So when they're eating, they're pecking away at it and everything, they're spilling that out of the trough over onto the ground. So we have to go through with our bucket here, and we have to pick up all of this wheat. Because for whatever reason, it drops their productivity if their area here is dirty. I don't understand why it should, because they're not in that area. They're in the pen. This is outside of the pen. It shouldn't matter at all. But the game thinks it does, so since the game thinks it matters, it does matter to us. We have to clean it up. We're going to do the exact same thing over here for the sheep because the sheep have made a hell of a mess as well as you can see look at all that grass there now there are ways that you can make sure that they don't make a mess like this there are little cheats you can do you can buy something such as grass for the chickens and you can dump grass over this area for the chickens. If the grass is in the place where the wheat is supposed to come out, the wheat will not come out. So just by dumping grass in the area, you can keep them from doing it. That doesn't work as well for the sheep because they eat grass. But if you fill the whole area with grass, no more grass is going to grow on top of that. Like It's not going to be spilled out on top but it'll still register as being dirty because it's what would go there. So for that, you'd have to do wood chips or something else that the sheep will not eat. You cover that feeding area with it and then they can't make a mess there. So clean it up, make sure it's perfect and then dump the other stuff in there and that keeps them from doing it. I don't really mess with that because I don't really care. It's not that big of a deal, I can pick it up. It's not an issue. So now we're going to go back over here and we're going to try to get this trailer filled all the way up so I can sell it. Because I really want to take and sell these sun, uh, soybeans so that I can make a little bit of money because I am damn near broke, guys. I only have $9,925 left. That is not much money at all. I'm down to my last ten grand, So I really need to get some money coming in. Because there's still a lot of things I need to buy and things that I want to do and I just don't have the cash. Remember, as I said earlier, we are in the dark days right now. This is the struggle time. This is the time when you're hustling, trying to make the money so that you can actually buy any equipment, even the small stuff, just to be able to do the job. And then later you begin thinking, okay, I've got a little bit of money now, I can do the job. Let's look and see what I want long term. What do I want to pick up that's going to last me till the end of the game. What's big enough, can do the job well enough, have enough horsepower, what's fast enough, what do I want to have to be my permanent piece of machinery. But right now, that's just not an option. One, we just can't afford it. It's way too much money. And two, with the other equipment we have, we don't really have a need for a machine with gigantic amounts of horsepower because we don't have anything that requires gigantic amounts of horsepower yet. But we will gradually move the, in that direction. We'll gradually get to the point where we're saying, okay, I want to do a bigger loading wagon because I don't want to make as many trips when I'm picking up grass. So I want to buy the biggest loading wagon we have. Okay, I can do that now. I have the money. But I don't have a tractor that has enough horsepower to operate it. So first I need to buy a bigger tractor. That's kind of the way it works. So as we make money and we save up, we will start upgrading our equipment and all of that kind of stuff. It doesn't really take all that long because as you go with these fields, I mean, I'll make a decent amount of money off this field because this is an entire field of soybeans, which is the best crop. And as we make the money off of it and sell it, we'll be able to upgrade stuff and buy bigger stuff. And then we can sell this field back and get the money we paid for this field 
back into our bank too. So that'll be a big jump up to our money. But we have to remember to save enough money back to buy other fields so that we can continue this process unless we're going to keep one or two fields and continually plant them, which is kind of the way you're supposed to do it on the game. But like I said, you reach a certain point in this game where you don't do things the way you're supposed to do them anymore because you found better ways to do them. And one of the better ways to do this is simply buy a field when it's ready, harvest it, and sell it back and get your money back for the field. You're getting free crops. All you have to do is harvest them. You didn't plant them. Somebody else did. You just bought the field, and then you get the free crops on it, and you sell it back for what you paid for it. So that's a great way to do it. Now, once again, you have the purest people that want this to be as realistic as possible. They get mad about that, and they say, you can't do that. That's cheating. Yeah, kind of, probably, maybe. I, I don't care. Why do I care if somebody thinks it's cheating? I, I don't. I just don't care. It's easier. I enjoy it doing it this way. I can buy every field and harvest them, and it's all good. I don't have to wait for the stuff to grow. I always have a field to work. I don't like downtime. I don't want to wait around and wait for something to grow. What I'm doing right now is just trying to figure out where I want to sell this. I'm looking at all the prices for soybeans and seeing what place has the best price. It's looking like right agribusiness is good and the edge grain vault black is good. That's the buy anything mod we have. They're both at 1400. So right agribusiness is way up here. I'm definitely not going all the way up there. No chance in hell. So I can just simply drive this right back up to my farm and sell it at my own sell point that I put in up there and we'll be fine. No need for me to go all the way up to the top of the map. That's just crazy because there's some major hills over there and it's kind of a pain in the butt to get all the way up there. There's also a sell point right over here and it's a little bit less. It's like $200 less per thousand liters to sell it over here, but I don't have to drive all the way over to, to my farm again. And I can just sell it right here if I want to. So that's always an option. You can either go to the closest one or you can go to the best paying one or somewhere in between. Once again, it's really up to you. You have so many options of what you can do. Right now, I think I'm going to try to get this all the way to 100%. Go ahead and fill it up. And then I will sell it. Won't take but a second to get it all the way filled up. Almost. Just a bit more. It's a little slower because he's actually empty right now. So what he's dumping into my trailer is what he's picking up off the field. There is no backlog in there now. Okay, 31,000 liters, we are full, and now it's time to sell. So I think what I will do is I will run back up and sell this probably at my farm. Although I might be able to sell it over here at the bakery as well. And that's kind of close. So we might go ahead and do that. Because you guys haven't got to see the bakery yet. It's kind of a neat place. So what you're going to do is you're going to drive through town. You kind of got to go slow because... There's a lot of turns, and there are a lot of light posts and everything sticking out. So you kind of got to watch where you're going. The bakery is going to be all the way over there, straight ahead. But you have a river that runs through the middle here. So we're going to have to turn up here to get across that river. You can either turn right or you can turn left. It doesn't matter. Either way you want to go. 
Over here on my right is the gas station. And over here on my left is a little diner. But as you turn left here, you can go up and around. Or I could have went up over there instead of down. And I could have crossed the river on the bridge over here. Either way you want to do it. Doesn't really matter. Okay, and then here I'm going to take a right. And then you can see the cell point over there on the left. You're going to go up and around the bakery and come through that alleyway. And that's how you unload. I like the bakery because it has the muffins on top. Isn't that cool looking? I dig that. That's a lot of fun. So then I'm just going to pull in here. And it's the same as any other cell point. There's a grate on the ground. You just pull up to it and you empty into the grate. And we'll see how much we get for this. As you can see, we just made $44,787 for one trailer load and we're not done with the field yet. So we'll probably clear around $100,000 or better on this field, which is awesome. Because remember, I was down at $9,000. I was hurt. So now we got a little cushion. We got fifty-four grand, and we can actually afford to, to do a couple different things. We can hire workers. We don't have to worry about running out of cash. We can buy feed for our chickens or our sheep if we need to, although I have plenty of grass. So now we're going to go back over here and drop this trailer off. And we're going to check on our silage real quick and see what percentage that's at. Okay, that is at 19% right now. So we're good there. We're good for all of our animals. I'll go ahead and clean this up probably. The wool is not quite ready yet, so we don't have to worry about that so much. Looks like everything is how it should be right now. I'm going to go ahead and just sell this tiny bit of grass that I picked up. <laughs> just make a couple bucks. Why not? We just made nine dollars for grass. The tiny little like 14 liters we picked up. So now we're gonna grab these eggs here that the chickens have produced and we're gonna go ahead and sell them. Now I could run each one over individually, but I think I'm gonna use the same trick that I used to get the other attachment over here. And I'm just gonna put these eggs inside the bucket. Because it worked so well before and I think it'll work again. Whoops. Pick that back up. Now luckily, you get paid the same amount even if you drop the eggs. So apparently they don't break very easy. And that's a good thing because eggs are pretty fragile. And if it was so realistic that they broke, if you dropped them and you lost money, that would not be good because I'm constantly throwing those boxes around. So then you just bring that over here and you should be able to just dump it. And there you go. 419 for one box, 397 for the other box. And we're good to go. I don't know what the third box was. I missed that. But probably about the same. So we made about 1200 bucks there. All right, so now we're gonna drop this bucket off. We're gonna pick this other piece up and I'll show you how it works. All right, let's check our harvester. He's good. That's at 21% now. So you see what I mean about having downtime sometimes? Like there's really nothing to do right now. I mean, I'm gonna do things just to stay busy, but there's nothing that absolutely has to be done right this second. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to head back down to the grass field. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can mow again. 
because I don't have anything going on. I mean, I'm harvesting the field, but there's nothing to do there until he's done harvesting it. So unless I'm going to take over for the worker and harvest it myself, I have a little bit of time to kill. So I figure, what the hell, let's see if we can cut some more grass. Never have too much. If I have way more than I need for my animals, I can always sell it and make a little bit of money. It's not going to sell for a great deal of cash, but it'll sell for some. Alright, we are actually at the shop right now because it was not time to mow again yet. So I thought about it and what I figured I would do is go ahead and buy the smallest little slurry tank I could and we're going to take this back up to the farm and we are going to fertilize our field that's being planted up there so we get more soybeans off of it. Since we're kind of waiting for stuff to be ready to do so we can kind of fill some time by going ahead and fertilizing this field so we make more off of it. Alright, we are back up here at the farm and we're going to go to our buy anything mod and we are going to fill this thing up with slurry. Now once we have pigs going and cows going, they will be producing slurry so we won't have to buy it anymore, we can just get it from them to use. Basically what slurry is, is liquid poop. That's the best way to say it. When your animals go to the bathroom, the poop mixes with straw and it becomes manure. But not all of it. You're going to use a hose probably to clean up some of it. And that liquid mess that comes off of that is what slurry is. And it's really good for your plants. So that's what we're going to put on our field. So it just kind of shoots out the back there. This is the smallest slurry spreader. There are ones where there are gigantic things that come off the back that cover a great deal of area and the slurry gets pumped up through hoses and it comes out of little jets on each of them. And we'll probably have stuff like that later on. But for now, this is very cheap and it does the job. So we're just going to spread some slurry. And that's just about all the time that I have left in this video. So I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And check out my No Man's Land series that I'm doing. I've got one video up on it. I'm going to be doing more. That's going to be a lot of fun too. So thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one. Until I speak to you again. Love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you and so do I. Bye-bye.